let us see now where measurement uncertainty comes from if we do pipetting with an automatic pipette. I'm holding in my hand an automatic pipette and with this pipette I'm going to pipette now exactly 2.3 milliliters of water from this water beaker into this sample beaker. Let us first examine this pipette a little bit. It is a pipette with adjustable volume and the volume can be adjusted from 500 to 5000 microliters, meaning from 0.5 to 5 milliliters. And with this knob I can set the volume here and what I have done now, I have exactly set 2.3 milliliters here, what I need to pipe it. Before pipetting, I need to attach to the pipette a pipette tip. So, and now the pipette is ready for use. Pipetting with an automatic pipette is in several ways different from pipetting with the glass pipette. But some things are similar also. First of all, also the automatic pipette is useful to rinse before pipetting. But here the rinsing is not so much about cleaning the pipette tip, because the tip, as they come from such containers or from packages, are usually very carefully cleaned. But rinsing the tip, as I will show you in a minute, serves the purpose of saturating the gas phase above the liquid with the liquid vapors, which is important for pipetting accurate volumes. Pipetting with an automatic pipette is done using this knob and it has two stops, one stop and the second stop. If I push it to the first stop, then exactly the right volume of the liquid is delivered, but the second stop is meant for emptying the pipette completely. So that before taking the liquid into the pipette, I push to the first stop and release, and when I deliver the liquid, I push to the second stop and release. And let's see now how this works. I first rinse the pipette two times, and then I will pipette the liquid volume of 2.3 milliliters into this sample beaker. So the pipette is held vertically and the liquid is aspirated into the pipette slowly. Okay, and now I release it into the waste beaker. So, and now I push to the second stop. Again I push to the first stop, immerse, Take the liquid slowly, okay, and now slowly push to the second stop and I touch with pipette tip either the beaker wall or the liquid itself. And now as I've rinsed two times, I now take the third time the liquid and I deliver it into the sample beaker. And again, I dispense completely and touch with the top of the pipette the liquid. So this beaker now should contain exactly 2.3 milliliters of water. And it's important to see now that the pipette tip has to be completely clean of any liquid droplets. This means that all the liquid has been dispensed into that beaker. Let us see now where the uncertainty comes from if we do pipetting with such an automatic pipette. Pipetting with the automatic pipette on one hand looks easier than pipetting with the glass pipette, but in fact it's more tricky and there are more uncertainty sources involved. First of all, again we have the calibration uncertainty as we had with the glass pipette and this is the calibration accuracy component of this pipette. And it can be said that with, with large volume automatic pipettes, it usually is significantly higher than with glass pipette. 
but with smaller ones it can be smaller. And secondly, it's very important that if a glass pipette is calibrated, then it keeps its calibration for very long time, almost infinitely. But these pipettes need occasional recalibration because the mechanics a little bit changes with time inside here. And so the calibration can drift away. And this drift can be maybe up to 1% of the volume, which is quite, quite a lot. Secondly, an important uncertainty component is the speed of pushing and releasing this button. It has to be as uniform as possible and it's very good if the person who uses it also calibrates it with the same kind of speed. Se then the third important uncertainty source is this rinsing and vapor saturation. With aqueous solutions this is not so critical and in fact in simpler applications people often do pipetting without any rinsing at all. But if you pipe at something which is more volatile, then such rinsing is absolutely a must. Otherwise you can get maybe 10 or 15 percent lower volume than otherwise you should. As with glass pipettes, it is important with automatic pipettes that the liquid which is pipetted is similar to the one with which the pipette was calibrated. As long as we pipette dilute aqueous solutions, all is fine. But if the pipette is calibrated with water, as is usually the case, and if the solution that then is pipetted is some concentrated salt solution or maybe concentrated uh, alkali or acid, then again quite significant additional uncertainty can come. And it can come uh, largely because of the density difference of the liquids and the density difference will cause less liquid to be held in this pipette tip because some slight vacuum will form here so that part of the liquid will fall out before you can take the pipette out of the liquid. Then the temperature effect of course has the same influence here as in the glass pipette but again here it's more tricky if the pipette is kept in the hand for a long time, then the temperature of this mechanical part increases and it can be significantly warmer than the temperature in the room. So that in fact the temperature effect with this type of pipette can be larger. There are also some other uncertainty sources that rather refer to sloppy working practices. One of them is using an incorrect tip. The next one is using a tip but not attaching it properly. And then also if pipetting is done either under an angle, this also introduces additional uncertainty. True, in certain applications for people it is much more easy to pipet at an angle than vertically. And in such a case, people oftentimes calibrate the pipette also under angle. Then it's okay. 